Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video we are going to be working on forging a vine tail fire poker. Now the fun thing about this fire poker as with like the vining or the vine tail S hook that we just did is this involves a lot of free form work so it allows for a lot of artistic expression um, and you can make these a bunch of different ways. One downside, however, though, is if you do sell these online, you do need to make sure that you let your customer know that each one will be different. I've ran into this a couple times where the vine didn't come out exactly like it was in the photograph some years later, and that can be a problem. So just make sure that you're real clear with that in your listing. Fun little fact there for you. So obviously we're going to start on the poker end, or the part that we're actually going to poke the fire with. And we're starting by drawing it out for about four inches of material. And then we're going to knock it like you've seen me do and bend it over back on itself. Now there's many ways of skinning the same cat here. You can, you can weld this on as a separate piece onto a bar, piece of bar stock, but I find it just easy enough to take and do it like this. So we'll get it all prepped up there and we'll stick it into the fire and bring it up to temperature for welding. We got a really nice welding heat, a nice high heat. We're going to spend a little time tapping the surfaces together, but we are not going to spend a bunch of time here. We're just going to get it together and then we're going to put it back in the fire. Bring it out again and then work quickly to finish drawing it out. This can be very, very advantageous for you as a beginner to learn your forge welding as this is one of the easiest types of welds to do in forge welding and it's really apparent later on if the weld didn't stick because when you go to bend the actual hook out for the poker end it will open up the weld if your welds didn't stick so um, this is a nice telling project that can really help you out we'll give it a good quick brush here and then we'll put it back in the fire and start drawing out that tip a bit more. So once you've got that tip drawn out, we're gonna bend it over the horn. And now that opens up that area that now we can bend this back portion or the hook. Now I've gotten a little bit too much heat on this here. So it started to bend not exactly where I wanted it to bend at. And that'll be something that you'll have to watch out for. You want to get a really nice short heat on this um, as to not create a bunch of, uh, you'll see me fighting just a little bit here with this, trying to make sure that bar straight. You can get kind of a bit of a warble or a little whopper jaw um, action just behind the actual hook out portion. And that can be kind of a pain to straighten out. As you can hopefully see there, it's a little crooked, it's a little warbly right in there it kind of jumps up towards that bend so now I got to spend time to address that so really nice heat control can be advantageous at this but setting up cameras you know heat got away from me a little bit <laughs> at least it's not burnt off in the fire somewhere so there we go I'm just gonna get that straightened up and there's a lot more of this kind of action here I like giving it a brush after I'm done forging just to see if there's any hammer marks or weirdness that I need to address uh, to get it any of that extra forging scale off of it. And there you have it. Good to go. If I can stop it, get it in the fire, Roy. <laughs> All right, so here you're gonna notice that I was lazy. I am using two twisting wrenches in order to twist this bar, simply because I did not want to move the camera at the time. I figured I'd show a different way of twisting where you could just use two wrenches if you were without you know, having a vise. This is the, probably the most inefficient way to actually twist a piece of bar stock up. So if you have a vise, make sure to use the vise if it's at your disposal. Um, you will not fight with it as much as what you're seeing me mess around with this here now. But again, I was lazy for the camera work. I just wanted to get the job done. And this is actually for a customer and, and a client. This job was 
Um, so, you know, it gave me a great opportunity to take and show off a pretty simple fire poker that has a lot of, di you know, has a lot of dimension and interest. Now, I personally like a nice, short, no longer than four inch twist, usually between two and three inch long twists. I think they look really good. Uh, but again, this is an artistic choice. You can make it however you like. Using a soft face mallet to straighten everything up and get everything nice and true. And there you have it. It's basically all squared up now. Now we're going to move on to the hook end. We're going to draw this down over the anvil top. Now for this, I'm going to want to draw out a really nice thin taper. You have to remember that curves take up a lot of material, and I do mean a bunch of material. So we're going to draw this out to a really nice long taper, probably six inches or more of material you need to move here. Uh, to get a really nice, long, even, viney look to this thing. A short taper won't get it done here because it won't look vine-like. Uh, if you want to see the difference, go out to your own shop before you start the process and forge a couple tapers at different dimensions and then try to bend them up and you'll see what I'm talking about. To get that really whispery, twisty, turny vine effect, uh, you really have got to draw this material out quite long. So as you can see, I'm still working it here into the lower heats. This is really kind of a bit of a waste. I should just get it back in the fire uh, at this point. I should have already been back in the fire with it. But here we go. Let me get that stuff back in there. Get it put right there in the fire. Nice hot spot of the fire. Now do be careful that you don't burn up the tip at this point because you have thinned it quite a bit. And it's very easy, very, very easy to burn the tip right off. So we'll go back over to the anvil and we'll get this thing all done back up here. Forging, forging, and forging away. <laughs> so what we'll do here is we're just drawing this out again really nice and long. Once I get close, I'll be rounding it up in this heat. That's another stylistic choice. You can decide to make this as smoothly round as you would like it to be, or not. Totally up to you. You can make the piece super round and nice and clean, or you can just choose to break the edges and let it have a lot more vine dimension and character. Um, again, those choices are completely an artistic thing. That's what I like so much about vines, um, grape vines, things like that, is really a lot of rules don't apply to it. You can make it kind of however you want. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. So what I think looks good might not look so great to you or even your client. So, you know, you have to make it what fits best for you. Some of the general rules about vine work is you are going to want to make sure that you have a, a nice long taper. That's about it. That's about the only rule here. Um, you can leave in as much forging texture as you want or as little forging texture as you want. Sky is the limit. Now, a real handy uh, method to figure out how much material I'll need for a vine is a formula that I have developed in my own shop. And it's about four and a quarter inches of material to one inch of wrap. So say on the hook end, like what we're working, you're going to want an inside diameter of one inch for it to hook over something, a bar or something like that for you. Then you are going to want to have at least four and a quarter inches of material just for that hook, for that one inch hook. Or if you bend it all the way around and completely into an eye that's wrapped to one inch, you're going to need at least four and a quarter inches of material. So I hope that is helpful to you. And now you can see all of that material that we just got done making get sucked up really quick here. So I would add an addition. I would add additionally, you know, say another four inches of material on top of that for the vine itself. 
um, if you're wanting to take and curl it up fairly tight or get a bunch of wraps on a vine. Also, as you can see here, I have switched to using a soft face mallet. So this way I don't beat the ever living tarnations out of that eye of that hook. We'll get it brushed up here real clean. And there we go. You'll see me use the soft face mallet a lot in my work. And that is for this purpose is so I don't leave unintended hammer marks on my work and my pieces. So now the next step in this process, we're going to use a pair of scrolling tongs. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers if you would like. Uh, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers and scroll this up just fine if you don't have a pair of scrolling tongs. Of course, a pair of scrolling tongs is a lot handier in this situation uh, just because they're nice and round and you know the vine will roll around that really super easy. But other than that, now you just want to roll this vine up however you like. Very similar to like a rat's tail uh, hook in where you would start the rat's tail. But the difference is, instead of starting with the rat's tail first, you're going to start with the hook, form the hook, and then you're going to curl the end of the tail around and around all over the place uh, and make it kind of floppy to look like a tendril on a vine. That's really the only difference. Just like so. And there you have it. So thank you all for watching this video. Um, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you feel like subscribing, it would be great to have you. And thank you to all of our channel members for making the content on my channel possible uh, to be able to do long form format like this. Uh, I just greatly appreciate it. And to all of my regular supporters at our bi-monthly live streams that we do. Thank you all so much. God bless everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one.